Are we are we allow live? I can live. I clicked the button. You clicked the button. I'm John Paduchak. And I'm Dr. Christopher Vogelman of Maximize Your Media and Life Beyond Practice. Yes. It's my intro. That's nice. You do you do well with that. I'm trying. I remember, or as Yoda would say, do or no dot. There's no dot. No, no. yes. Exactly. Hey, so we're here today. We're going to talk about adversity and overcoming adversity. Because the topic I know well. It's a topic we all know very well. I know. Both of us. The more but you, in, you in particular. So I'm not going to I'm not going to interrogate you. But or steal I, my thunder. Or steal your thunder. <laughs> or lightning. Because it or might strike lightning. twice. Exactly. But yeah, we never know. Oh, but I really should. I really should share this thing, though. That's the only thing I forgot to do. That is Josh, what I'm doing it. right now. We're going to take uh, a moment and share. We're, we're talking about adversity and adversity. Overcoming adversity also is trying to share your broadcast. And sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. So says the big dinosaur. Yes, big sharing is dinosaurs. Caring. So that's what we're doing. We're caring enough caring. to share. I'm caring about hair. My my grandmother loved pickled herring and pickled pig's feet. But oh. That has nothing to do with this right now. She ate a lot of stuff that most people never should, and she lived to be 95. Oh, well, there you go. No, 96. I'm sorry, 96. Hey, and speaking and speaking of that, guess what I got today? Uh, you got pickled herring. No, I got cabbage. Oh, ah, so you can make sauerkraut. I can make sauerkraut. Hey, so something there you go. Hey. There you go. Well, now I got to find ginger. Ginger, turmeric, ginger sauerkraut is what, what I. What about think. Marianne? Oh, that's a thought. Maybe I could find her instead. Exactly. <laughs> I know. I used to love that. That's so great. Here we are talking about. I'm typing away here about uh, overcoming adversity. Overcoming adversity, which, like I said, one of my favorite things. And I did post the link if anybody wants to uh, join us and. Yeah, please in. join us because I'm sure somebody. Yo. I see my friend Gio over here. Good to see you, my friend. Oh, yeah. it's asking me to share to a group. Holy Not cow. so much interviews. Uh, actually, Dr. V and I have just been on chatting. Not so much interviewing. but well, we, ha we have done yeah, interviews. Well, we I have think. been doing some interviewing. Yeah, I think we'll yeah. do some more along yeah. the way. Yeah, nice to see you. You'll have to pop in someday. We'll we'll interview you. Did you share this to the 30-day live video oh, channel? Wow. I did. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. I did. <laughs> I'm going to share it to something else here. I'm gonna so, go with I'm gonna go with life beyond practice since I like that one. I'm gonna share it to Dr. Vogelman's professional page. And let's see, I need to share to my timeline. Yeah. There's gotta be an easier way to do this. There is an easier way. We'll have to figure out what that is, because right now I'm experiencing a bit of adverse adversity. <laughs> There's a couple of ways to do that. We're using StreamYard. Yeah, StreamYard. We tried, we tried all of them, Gio, and StreamYard seems to be our favorite. So far, well, until so something far. better comes down the pike. And if anybody wants StreamYard, uh, they give us a nice little, they have a nice little referral plan where I can give you a discount and then I get a, I get some money back too. So yeah, enough, enough for coffee. If anybody, <laughs> exactly, enough for coffee. Or a couple coffee. of coffees, maybe, depending on how many people take yeah. it up. It depends so, on how many cups yeah. you want, so. But yeah, That's, StreamYard has been very cool. Um, yeah. We're broadcasting in five different places right now, which is which is yeah. very cool. StreamYard been very very good to me. Mostly trying to see what kind of audience we have in, uh, yeah. in those spots. I mean, we know we know we've got a good office on Facebook and YouTube. Office, yeah. office. I said office. Office. Audience. I You're, are you stuck in Microsoft <laughs> Office? Bill Gates audience. has you by the throat somehow. I know. <laughs> I meant audience. Uh, we we know we've got a good Facebook and YouTube audience, and we're yeah. trying out Periscope, which I haven't done in a long, long time. Now, Periscope, that's something I never I really guess. quite mastered, but that it's was it was fun to do. Twitter, but yeah. uh, usually it's mostly for celebrities and movie stars, but we're going to give it a whirl, see what happens. A movie star. And we're trying Twitch out just to see. Are you doing Twitch today? Get from Twitch. I am doing Twitch again. I've done Twitch like two or three times now. That's really amazing. And I haven't checked to see what kind of responses I'm getting from Twitch, but uh, I have done it a couple times. I sometimes have a nervous Twitch, but that's a different yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And Gio, right. don't you talk about adversity? In yeah, Facebook? adversity. In and we're not talking. Yeah, maybe some people have. Are, are, some people are focused on ads, 
um, they're like Facebook ads, but those are different. Those ads are not adversity, although you can have some adversity mm -hmm. trying to create the right uh, ads. copy. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I said the right copy, the right image, and the right offer. So Correct. So let's talk a little bit about John let's begin. Let's, So, so let, me, let, let me find out a little bit more about you and your internet marketing efforts. Well, actually, before that, the types of things that you did after graduating from the Rochester Institute oh, of wow. Technology. You're getting way back, huh? RIT. Well, at least oh. a little bit, touching on that, because you did something. You had a, a major that I thought was incredible. I'd never heard of this before. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Imaging science, which uh, which is quite a big thing. It's uh, the engineering of imaging, essentially. Yeah. And RIT at the time was the only school in the world that taught that mm -hmm. particular major. So that was pretty wild. So what was that? I mean, you just the the, the science, the technology, how to create better oh, images. Gosh, like we did everything from CGI uh, research or research to not so much CGI, but we yeah. did a lot of remote sensing work. You know, so. The satellite imagery, mm -hmm. that stuff. and um, color science was part of it. So lighting and color, all of that. Which you see me talk a lot about lighting from time to time. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. All of so, that. All of that what, really deep engineering behind the imaging. And was this was this applicable to to lighting and broadcasting studios and other things, or was it more it satellite is. stuff? Yeah. It's it's kind of more beyond that, but yeah. really applicable to what I do now. And um, for the longest time, I worked uh, I worked with a company that was uh, an Israeli company, and the uh, hmm. original company I worked for was a start was a startup that was originally bought by this company, mm -hmm. and um, I created or worked worked in the engineering of uh, these huge graphic arts, these huge drum printers for graphic arts, which now we can use our desktop printer to do all of that stuff. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm mute. I'm muting you. I'm muting myself occasionally because there's a landscaper outside right now. And I kept, the window, open over I kept the window open only yeah. because it's getting really hot in here and I don't want to turn the AC on. In fact, I found out the other day that one of the printers that I actually had in my, had my hands in, it was owned by Graham Nash, is now in the Smithsonian. Oh, so you did, did you carve your initials into it or anything? Or I no? wish, but you I wish you had in my hands in something that's now in the Smithsonian. How cool is that? That's pretty cool. That's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. So I just found out that recently. I had no idea that um, his printers had wound up there. Have you seen it there or no? I haven't. No, oh, okay. it, was, it was fairly recently. I haven't been to the Smithsonian since, gosh, I want to say late 80s, late, no, not late. Yeah, maybe late 80s. It's been quite a long time ago since I've been to the Smithsonian. Yeah, I was in the Smithsonian fairly regularly over the course of 27 years. Sure, and you lived in the area. So it was just I just walked out, yeah, take the metro, walk downtown, wander around. If I'd only known that that drum mm -hmm. printer was there, I would have looked you up. Of course, I didn't know who you were till about three weeks ago. So exactly. Wouldn't have helped. Surprising. I'm surprised we never ran into each other with our crossover. We have a lot. Yeah, we have a lot, we have a lot of common, common with internet marketing and video people and, and uh, copywriting people, you name it. So yeah. So then, so you, you left the digital, I mean, so did you get a job in digital engineering? I did. I got a job with a with a little graphic arts company that then merged with a bigger graphic arts company. So where where, where did you go? Did you stay in Rochester? Or? No, Bedford, uh, Massachusetts. Bedford. Bedford is where yeah. I ended up. Yeah. But um, yeah, I went from Rochester working in a film research lab to working in Bedford, Mass. Mm -hmm. Just as my company in Rochester was closing down. Ah, well, there you go. So you yep. pretty much, that was your move to New England. Was that was my move that. to New England. I stayed here ever since. And I, I only ended up in that field for, oh, four or five years. And then I switched to working in financial services for 20-some years. So financial services, doing what? Like selling insurance and stockbroking? Insurance or? and investments. Yeah. Oh, okay. Insurance and investment work. And then um, went into working on my wife's business. My wife's a PT and physical therapy, PT and massage therapist, I should say. Cool. Private practice, and I did a lot of her website work. So that now, was kind of my so, start. Things. So that was your start in sort of the internet digital agency digital thing, yeah. realm. Yeah. 
And it worked great because I got my wife a lot of a lot of clients over the years with that, and um, just kept kept getting better and better at it as time went on. Yeah, I'm sorry, I now have helicopters coming. <laughs> I know. You just can't <laughs> this, is, this is so Coronado Island. You have to understand on the north part of the island is the Naval Air Station. I know. So we have everything from helicopters, cargo planes, you name it. And apparently today is the lovely combination of Black Hawk helicopters wow. and uh, leaf blowers. I get a little so, of that too because I I've got the landscapers here too. But I'm in the flight path to the Manchester New Hampshire airport. All right. And so I, I usually hear quite a few planes and helicopters yeah. and stuff here myself. So I understand. So how did you get from Massachusetts? So then were you doing the PT stuff in Massachusetts or was that in New Hampshire? Uh, my wife worked yeah. in New Hampshire. Oh, in New Hampshire. Yeah, okay. She's in an office here in New Hampshire. She originally started working out of a health club. Um, we had some friends that were that we met that were in that arena and owned a health club. Mm -hmm. She had her office there for gosh, 10 years, and then moved into a uh, uh, a different venue that used to be an obstetrician's office in Nashua. So instead of delivering babies, she was delivering physical therapy and massage. Massage and, massage and physical therapy services. Yeah. It's funny cool. how much that's evolved over the years. She's doing a lot more PT type work now. Yeah. And she's doing, um, you know, dry needling and that kind of stuff. So that work has evolved. It got us, you know, very interested in healthcare too. Uh -huh. which uh, which was great because, as you know, I had like this really long illness. And that was one of the things that got me through that is some of the connections we made in different places and, and all of that. So, 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 that, wait, so were you, were you doing digital marketing and digital agency services at the time your health crisis? I was, hit? I, was. Okay. I was doing that and I was starting to do a lot of web work with webinars Mm -hmm. And um, just starting out with live video, you and I yeah. both were working with Hangouts when it first came out. Yes, Hangouts, and what was the other one? It was yeah. uh, Hangouts and Blab and Blab webinars. I completely yeah. forgot about Blab. Yeah, that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, when, when you bring up adversity in yeah in adversity, life, it's something I know very well because when you when you are sick for five years and you're trying to survive and keep working, that's not an easy thing to keep moving through. That's pretty tough. So it's like what a were the, Yeah. So what were the what were the at the beginning? What were the toughest things that you were facing? Was it with uh, potentially losing clients or just getting through the day to create things or kind of all of the above? It was yeah. um, potentially losing clients. It was trying to get you know more than a few hours of work done a day mm -hmm. because I just wasn't wasn't able to do too awful much. It was kind of crazy. And it was it was a weird scenario. It was like um, it was like everything I was doing was being filmed for the whole time that I was not feeling well, not doing well. And then all of a sudden, like the tape started rolling, and like everything started to feedback. It was very odd. I, it's almost hard to explain. Well, that you didn't like almost like you were watching yourself through all kind of yeah. Kind of. In a lot of ways, it's sort of like almost like that out of body experience where you don't really think that what you're experiencing is you. That's it's a movie going on. It's exactly right. Yeah, that is exactly the way it worked out. It's a way. Of, it is yeah. a way of coping too to kind of distance yourself. No, it is from yourself. Yeah, it is very much a way of coping, and so, um, tough too, especially because yeah. uh, wasn't an easy thing to diagnose. I, I finally ended up getting connected with a doctor who specialized in it. Mm -hmm. And um, by the time I got to him, he's kind of like, man, you already figured most of this out. Yeah. Which is, which is pretty wild. So I really had to be be my own researcher, which, you know, we see movies about people doing that. You don't really think you're going to end up being the person to do that yourself. But I had done a lot of my own research and kind of gotten to the point where I could get better. Mm-hmm. So what was the turning point for you within this time frame? I mean, were you still seeing clients or, or dealing with two hours of work a day during those five years? I or were still, you? I was still seeing clients, but it got to the point where I couldn't really, it was really difficult to do that. And I had to shift gears a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I just started moving back into my agency work within really like the last six months. Well, did the, did the types of clients or the type of work that you were doing change? Did you restrict yourself? Yeah, to I ended up doing a lot more um, webinar work, 
uh, mm -hmm. launches, helping people choose their platforms, helping people with live video, much more consulting oriented work mm -hmm. because um, it was easier to do that than try to deal with a lot of clients at the time. Right. So, yeah, it was really quite a, sh quite a shift over. And then what, what, and what were the hardest things that you that you did during that time frame? The hardest things that I did that during that time. Whether the, the webinars or the launches were more energy consuming, or what was the thing that? Uh... Now, most of the stuff that I did at that point wasn't too energy consuming because I kind of steered out and into stuff that was a little less energy consuming, or mm -hmm. that was at least easier to work in for me. So I had to make quite a big shift. Not only did I have to make a shift in business, but a big shift in lifestyle. Right. I had to completely change, you know, eating habits and no more processed food, alcohol, right. coffee, all of that good stuff. So that was quite a big change too. It's interesting when I was talking about all that good stuff. Because <laughs> we look at, I, we look at, I, I look at my desserts, me. my desserts, my alcohol, all the things. I had to give up all the good stuff. No, I'm all just, the good stuff. Sugar. So sugar's good. Good. Yeah. yeah, sugar is a tough one. Sugar, sugar is like, man. Yeah. So I had to really give up the sugar stuff too. Did you find that your energy improved during that time when you gave up the sugar or was that just part of the whole general process of getting your it health back? It definitely helped. You know, a lot of, it's funny how many people seem to think, oh, I'll just, you know, dope up on sugar and coffee to uh -huh. get more energy through the day or right. some other way to do that. And I found that by ditching coffee, um, ditching sugar, I had a lot more real energy. Mm. You know, I got, I still had sugar but sugar from fruit and right. that kind of stuff as opposed to sugar sugar processed sugar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but um yeah it was quite a quite a, quite a switch over so so in that shift of your mindset i mean what kind of shift of mindset did you have when you made that decision to go to wow. say, doing consulting and web stuff and uh, well, sorry, webinars as well mm. as the uh, launches. Was there something that you you just flicked a switch in your head, or did you make a conscious decision to go for something that was going to be? I don't think I made a conscious decision so much as it was I made the easy decision. I went with the thing that was that I was most passionate about. It was easy for me to do, yeah, and, um, and just kind of worked at the best. It wasn't an easy transition though, because there were so many other lifestyle changes that I had to make. Right. Um, but it was, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that had to happen to, to improve. So that was the it's, difficult part was just trying yeah. to do all of that at one time. And yeah. then you always kind of wonder in the back of your head, will somebody ever be able to figure this out? Because I, yeah. five years trying to figure this out. It's overwhelming. Yeah. It is kind of overwhelming. And then you're like, gosh, am I ever going to get through this? Am I going to find somebody who can fix me right. or help me? get over the hurdles that I have. And it's funny, a lot of people pop popped out along the way mm -hmm. and um, and were able to keep me working. Um, I've had tremors really bad since I was age two. And so that was like the okay. worst thing. And then I found out as I changed diet and all of that, that went away. But, ah. my, but my acupuncturist beca became my best friend. I right. literally went to see them. They run a community acupuncture clinic here, which is really unusual. Yeah, um, you go and you're you're treated in like a group setting, which yeah. is awesome. You know, you go you sit in a recliner, and I went for treatments about three or four times a week, mm -hmm. and um, they uh, they kept me alive pretty much for that time period. It was a lot of did work. You, did you <laughs> so when you so when you approached all these, having to look at your on your your own research and and yeah. overcoming these obstacles or so, what was your attitude towards the whole research process? And did you run into some dead ends, or what was that all about? No, it's it's funny actually. It's a lot of experimentation when you yeah. do something like this. So it's yeah. a lot it's a lot of trial and error. And mm -hmm. what ultimately happened is I found a physician who did the same exact thing. And I, I was jokingly saying to him one day, I said, what did you go to before you became a physician? Because you were some kind of, you went through a science curriculum or right. an engineering curriculum or something like that. I found out you went to chemical engineering school. Oh, there you go. You, you found your, MD. You, you found your healthcare soulmate. Found the guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so it was great because we went through the same process of eliminating stuff and, and just kind of walking through and figuring things out. And at the same time, I had a lot of other friends in healthcare who said, well, have you tried this or have you tried that or have you tried this, which was great. 
because it gave me more stuff to try. I just kept trying. Eventually, I found stuff that worked and stuff that didn't. Um, I became a big student of meditation, mm-hmm. which I would never give up for anything now. I spent a lot of time you know, doing that daily, and um, that's part of my morning ritual. I, I went and I, I um, so a friend of mine mentioned Hal Elrod's book. Have you read it, The Miracle Morning? No. It's a great book. Okay. It, and it kind of goes through the five rituals of successful people, which are exercise, visualization, meditation, um, journaling, and there's another one. <laughs> it's not coming to me right now. But anyways, so so it was great because it, it was just what I needed for the time and to get on the right step. And you woke up every morning feeling like even if you couldn't get through something else, you accomplished something. Right. Because you yeah. got through all of that and you felt like you got off to a great start. And I, guess I got off to a better start and I could work yeah. longer and longer as time went on. Well, so it sounds as though, you know, establishing a routine was key to you overcoming this uh, it was. situation. Yeah. For sure. And the ritual. Sure. The ritual is very important. Mm-hmm. So what was the what was the trigger or the turning point, say six months ago? Turning point six months ago. Wow. That's that's a trickier one. Was it the sky? The, the sky didn't open up, and you had a ray of sunshine coming down. No, the no. But what I found was that um, meditation was definitely helping me a lot, and going through that process was helping me a lot. And mm-hmm. um, um, I think it was I think it was kind of a spiritual aspect mm-hmm. of of things clicking and and coming together right for me at that point um, that made a big difference. Mm-hmm. I don't know how else to describe it. It's just like all of a sudden something really kind of clicked with that. A few other things clicked off around that and things improved and kind of came together. And so, so, so when everything started coming together again, then what we're having been through this health crisis and Mm -hmm. gone through the change in business and everything else, what were the types of things that you started thinking about or planning or types of work that you were ready to do again well i was definitely definitely i had been working with live video the whole time um there was a period where i was having some issues with um like like a like a gap like a word gap thing Mm -hmm. i I was having trouble keeping a stream like a steady stream of Mm -hmm. thought Mm -hmm. And um, I was going to see my father uh, when he was when he was close to passing away. Mm-hmm. He was really sick in, in a nursing home, and I was going to see him on this one particular occasion. And I started coming back, and in, I got to Massachusetts, just over the border, um, into Mass. And I made a made a stop at one of the rest stops. And honest to gosh, I thought I was like having a stroke. Hmm. I had this weird thing going on with my bifocals. I, so I figured it out. I had this weird thing going on with my bifocals. It made me super dizzy, hmm. but it did something screwy with me that I can't explain. <laughs> and, and and I I really I just didn't know what was going to happen. It was the most peculiar scenario that I've ever encountered. Well, input. You know, anytime you have a sensory input yeah. that doesn't quite jive with your regular neurological patterns or your neuronal patterns and the firing goes off a little bit yeah. strangely that can have an effect i mean just look at strobe lights and epileptics i you know. know if there's something not right in the input it just can trigger something you know it was kind of a lot like that too because yeah. it was it was just um i was getting getting dizzy and it had it also had this thing with um coffee hadn't bothered me and a lot of times on a, on a trip like that you know i'll have a cup of coffee a couple cups of coffee on the trip just to stay awake and be able to kind of keep driving a little, little stimulant. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I, I found out later that I had developed a sensitivity to co- to uh, caffeine. Ah, okay. And that was the other part of the trigger in there. So I figured between the crazy, you know, bifocals, I was getting dizzy and the caffeine had developed a sensitivity for me. Uh. And so it was yeah. it, it wasn't that caffeine caused you to start seeing things. No. No, okay. No, nothing like that. But it was really it was really a weird kind of culmination of it's funny how yeah. something that seems so simple and seems almost stupid, mm-hmm. you know, the more you start 
working through it, you go, gosh, how in the world did this like come together in this way to cause like such a problem? Because when, well, when I saw of it, it was like a bunch yeah. of like really simple things. Well, it things can stack. Really big, yeah, yeah. they can stack on each other. Yeah, you know, it's like it's like it's like you've got your own sort of uh, uh, health ecosystem Jenga. All you right. got to do is pull a couple of them out, and the whole thing topples. Oh yeah, and that's what happens. Yeah, yeah, and you know it's so through all of this, you know, you look at all the different obstacles that come yeah. up. You know, you're you're challenged financially because you're having trouble keeping as active as you were and all right. and doing the work that you once did. You're having, um, you know, the physical challenges and everything, trying to come up with, um, you know, what's the diagnosis of this? How do I, what's the treatment plan to get better? There is none. Nobody could figure it out. And so it, it, it's a lot of stuff to kind of absorb. So and, you had to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you had to assemble your own team and your own healthcare plan. I did. Yeah. I, did. I did. And I slowly just kind of like worked my way through it. There were um, there were certain times where I just felt miserable, and I would like go to acupuncture, and I would like leave almost flying. It was crazy. Right. These guys did a great job keeping me going, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I just found like the little band aids along the way to just kind of keep persevering. And, and so, that, and that perseverance. I mean, what is was that something that just came to you naturally, or you just have have had that from? you know, growing up on a farm or what were the things? That I think it came to me naturally. I know it doesn't, uh, a lot of people aren't self-motivated in right. a lot of ways. For me, I was always kind of relatively easily self-motivated. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny now after all of this has kind of gone by, you know, like um, Eric had sent me a video a while back. Uh, Mike Dillard went through something very similar to what I did. Ah, okay. And, and he had like a whole video on it with his doctors and, and everything. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I like remember that. He he even talked about this one time and I, I didn't know what to make of it. I remember I remember sitting in bed with my wife and I heard this massive pop. And I'm like, Andrew, did you hear that? And she's like, no. And then I realized it was in my head. It was uh -huh. a pop in my head. And he talked about the same thing which really freaked me out for a while. But they said it was some kind of a, a chemical reaction and uh, passing through the blood brain barrier. It's pretty wild, but but Mike Dillard had that same exact thing happen to him. And I was Very like, interesting. Wow. Yeah, that was really, it's pretty wild. Yeah. So, it's, so, so, yeah. so going through this, this healthcare crisis was probably I would imagine this is like the largest obstacle you've ever had. Is that correct? I would say it was one of the largest obstacles I've ever had to deal with. Okay. So coming out of it, what are the lessons that you've learned aside from your incredible ability to be persistent? Yeah. Doctors don't always know everything. That's true. That was mm. one of the big lessons. I hate to say that, Dr. V. <laughs> I, know, I know a couple of things. Doctors don't always know. In fact, my own, my own uh, personal... Um, PCP referred to me as his as his experiment. His it experiment. Kind of, it was kind of cool. I mean, we were experimenting together, and he was a willing participant. Oh, and he helped me to try this and try that, and kind of work through things. Um, I also realized that you know you never fully comprehend how important your friends are in this thing until mm -hmm. you're faced with something like this. I had a friend of mine who introduced me to. Um, a private physician that was a good friend of his over in uh, Austria. Wow! Who helped me find some really cool things, and he's the um, he's the physician to the royal family of Austria. Mm -hmm. So I mean, he's really a br a brilliant man, and he he helped me with some little tips that gained momentum for me. So so at the end of the day, I mean, I got so much input from a lot of different people, and I was fortunate to know a lot of you know, have a lot of friends in other areas of healthcare. Other guys. Say, this, is, this is the card that was on top of the stack that I just had. Right. With friends. Exactly. We talked about that earlier, <laughs> but it was, it was so, it was so huge. And, yeah. um, you know, I, I've had so many friends be supportive of me through this and, you know, helping me with, um, 
uh, different things that I was trying to pick up. You know, they would they would gift me class stuff to look through and wow. do different things with. Um, my friend Mark Hunter and I went through Digital Marketers' whole curriculum together. Wow! Because uh, he wanted to do that, so I participated in that with him. That's so, cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That was the one thing I didn't have trouble with was was learning and picking up more stuff. So now, where I am today, I'm in a place that's pretty awesome. I mean, I've got all of this background to really do some great stuff. So what? Are, so now that you've you've sort of walked through the valley of the shadow of death, or so, if you want to be really dramatic, can you tell my grandfather was a preacher? Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can. So what what are the uh, things that you're looking forward to now as far as putting? I know that you'd mentioned to me that you were going to try and assemble the various assets and things that you have to, to create something right. new and different and better. What's that looking like right now? Yeah, it's it's uh it's it's been a slow process reinventing. Because mm -hmm. one of the one of the challenging parts with with reinventing yourself is trying to really figure out um it's, it's almost like you go through this process of what do you want to do with the rest of your life? Mm -hmm. What can you do? What do you really want to focus in on? What's your really core strength? So it's really had me doing a lot of introspective work that I hadn't, I'd put off. Um, I probably should have done it eons ago. Um, Troy wants to join the stream. Hang on a second. Hey, Troy. Come on in. Troy, yeah. Here so is it more like, it's more like, so you say, what do you want to be when you grow up? Is it more like what you like to well, do, the, what you're I'm good at? Or do they come together? Is the funny part about it is he's probably watching on my personal timeline. It's okay, you can find him somewhere. Yeah, me is on my personal timeline. <laughs> find Troy. Troy, where are you? Oops, I found him. Car fifty four. Hey, where man, are you? You're in a different spot for me. Um, Troy, Troy is hiding someplace. Yeah. So one of the one of the things that was very challenging for me is trying to just settle in on exactly what I want to do. I was I was a little bit fearful that I was going to make commitments that I couldn't keep. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, that's a big concern, obviously. Because it's fresh, it's fresh in your mind with the things that you couldn't yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I had to test out some stuff with a few friends to make sure that I could, you know, do what I wanted to do. And, right. um, and that worked out great um, from the standpoint of, you know, just being able to take action and really kind of fine tune my process and what I want to do along the way. And as you want, as you go along the way and do this, are you looking at it primarily what you like to do or what is more profitable or is it a combination of these it's things? Combination. Yeah. It's a combination because, you, you know, at the end of the day, you really want to be doing work that's more enjoyable to you uh -huh. mm -hmm. and not that's a and not a drag. Hey, and then you've got people like Troy McDonald. That, Troy McDonald. <laughs> he's, living up, he's living up on Coca-Cola late at night. So you can always join in. So yeah, it's been quite a it's been quite a reinvention. And yeah. it it's funny, you know, trying to redesign my website and so many different things have changed and just trying to scale everything out and make it so that it's very straightforward and not confusing because I I'm working in a lot of different areas. Um, my family started working with me in some parts. So my wife eventually wants to kind of leave her practice at some point. Cool. Um, maybe do some of the stuff here. My son leans towards doing very technical type, type things. He just turned 21. And uh, my daughter's really into social media. And um, so oh, trying to she like the work I do in video. You have a digital family powerhouse. I do kind of. It's yeah. really weird, you know. Um, my son's a spectrum kid. I homeschool him. Mm -hmm. Um, and so he he's got that real knack for technology and he loves doing that. Mm -hmm. And uh my daughter's got my personality, which is pretty unique. We we go with different but we go like the acupuncture, we're like cracking each other up, telling jokes while we're sitting with needles in us, which is kind of painful. Uh, <laughs> have you ever done, have you ever done those, uh, the suction cups? Oh, dude, yeah. Oh, okay, cupping. Oh, yeah, crazy. I, I took postgraduate acupuncture courses before graduating, so we had to needle ourselves in this same points because before you could needle anybody else. So <laughs> you learned you oh. learned exactly where those points were. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I've learned a lot about cupping. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's pretty cool. Well, he pulls a lot of toxins out of you. 
Hey, so Troy, what's shaking in your world? What's happening? Uh, well, I've been listening to you guys while I was working yeah. in the background and uh, whatnot. And, uh, How's it going? It's me, the son. son. It's hey, the 20 year old. Hello, hello, technical son. He's my technical son. You know, it's kind of cool when something happens to your computer. And my son's got a little bit of a sleep disorder. So he's on like a different time schedule a lot of times. Ah. So he works what I call the night shift. The night Which shift. Is great because I can, I can dump something on and say, hey, you know, my computer's not working. Could you fix it? So it all like reload or reboot it, all ready to go the next day. We got your own help desk. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, ambulatory help desk. Yeah, my own IT team over here. Yeah, that is just great. Not bad at all. So yeah, I was listening to you guys, and uh, it made me think about also my bit of my journey too. Um, Bring it, I, man. I, think it. I had it longer than you know I realized what it was until mm. like it really kind of came down to me, and that's where I had to change my eating as well. Oh, yeah. Being allergic to uh, gluten dairy and eggs what i call the trifecta of death because that's where <laughs> yeah, all, the really good, right. all the good stuff came from oh you're missing the soy well no i mean i don't want any more but i i oh, yeah. i recently um i so i've been following that diet and mm -hmm. then i then i've been having the the itchiness come back and all stuff like that and i'm like what's going okay. on and yeah, if you got like a stray thing or two, you know, that happens occasionally, but it was too, it was staying around too long. And I'm like, I'm sticking to my diet. What's going on? And so I, I started thinking of the thing that like is my only enjoyment, so to speak, or one of my only ones. And that's soda. Like that's wow. kind of my treat. Oh, wow. And I was like, well, what do they all have in common? Because I drink different flavors. And I was like, I wonder about the high fructose corn syrup. Yeah. That can be part of it, but also sometimes it's the carbonic it. and phosphoric acid that are in all sodas. Mm. So, it, it, but it can also yes. be the high fructose corn syrup. Yes, could be. So, yeah. I haven't got since. I mean, I can't get in to go for another test to see, you know, yeah. what what it possibly might be. Um, I started cutting that out, and I could notice a difference. But yeah, I don't know if it's completely that. So it may be like you're saying, it might be something else as well. Yeah. Um, but anyways, I got to go back in and get tested to get more details. But I'm like. My diet really pretty much it, it consists of meat and vegetables and fruits. Yeah. Yeah. That's Probably what I do. Stuff, yeah. Yeah. Hey, did you notice any difference? Because last night you were sipping on a soda, and I was just wondering if that had any effect on you. As in what type of effect? Like, uh, did you did you have more of this itching or something or anything? Well, like that? The, that that one specifically, the Mexican one is, is they use cane sugar. Oh, you've got the Mexican one. Yeah, I love the Mexican soda. That's the why. I sugar, it, yeah, you could be that could be right because the cane sugar behaves so differently than corn syrup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's why I actually had said yeah. because all I held it up and I was all hecho in Mexico is made. Oh, that's a, I totally yeah. missed that. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to avoid the soda like entirely. We started Nick though started drinking the um, the soda with stevia in it, mm. which isn't it doesn't have quite the same flavor, but it's not bad. And, yes, uh, I use stevia for for some things. Yeah, and I, I do like it better than you know other options. Yeah. However, it, it is it is interesting. Any any of them because I even tried like let me try diet soda that had other stuff in it, which yeah. people will argue okay that give you cancer anyway. Yada yada. Look, diet drinks and even zero ones they pretty much just suck. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. I mean, talk about they're they're good. It's like no, you allowed yourself to buy into the fact that you like it because that's what you can have, but they suck when you come from the real world of. Yeah, right. well, stuff. It's like, it's like and you look at it from the same point, the artificial sweeteners, aspartame, sucralose, all these other things, they actually stimulate your brain's hunger center. And so what happens is your stomach gets the artificial sweetener, your, your, your taste buds get the artificial sweetener, sending right. the signal to your brain that, hey, something sweet's about to happen. Your stomach and your intestines get ready for the sugar stuff to come through. And when it doesn't come through, the signal sent back to the brain saying, hey, we never got the sugar. You need to find us some sugar. Yeah. So you wind up consuming more with artificial sweeteners than you do with what you just had, you know, with say the cane sugar and the Coca-Cola. And so. they do mess up your gut too, just as bad oh, as yeah. real sugar. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I had I, I had a weight loss clinic in DC alongside of my chiropractic uh, clinic. And I mean, the weight loss clinic just 
it, it made bank. That did far better okay. than the chiropractic end of things because people want to drop those 20, 40 pounds or whatever more than they want a nice straight spine or be pain free. They pop bills <laughs> for pain usually. And, and it was interesting. We had people who came in there and they would be drinking two of those two liter bottles or they'd be drinking typically a six pack or a 12 pack of Diet Coke a day. And I can't imagine being inside that stomach when that's coming down. Like you're another number five, number six. I know somebody that does, I would say anywhere from eight on the low end to at least a dozen a day of the Diet Cokes. Yeah. Mm. It's um, like every day, every day. And that's actually going to decrease your ability to focus and to be able to think clearly. Yeah. And if you want to be an entrepreneur who can think clearly, you really have to back off of some of the stuff that's really going to be affecting your brain in not such a great way. Well, speaking of affecting my, my brain, mm -hmm. so John, on my recent uh, live update to the, uh, to the live event marketers group, I had seen your previous video where I could have sworn you you pronounced your name as Paduche. Paduchek. Paduch Paduchek. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that still isn't even how you pronounced it. I had Paduche. Nobody pronounces you at first. You usually have to know me for about two years before you get I was saying because I was saying Paduchek. Yeah. It's not like Paduchek. Paducek. check Okay. Because I'm, I'm making a note here. So when I say it again, like I'll visually remember until I get it like ingrained. And I'm told I pronounce it wrong. Well, if, you want, if you want somebody who can do, you need Paducek. You need me. Oh. I can do it. Hey, Jody, what's happening? Hey, what's going on, guys? What are we up to today? Welcome. We're overcoming obstacles. Yeah. We're trying to figure out where to find people when, we're, when they want to come into the stream. I, I never <laughs> had trouble finding that, so I just add you to the stream. Bring well, me I just came in from not it, being able to overcome getting my lawnmower to run. So well, there you go. So there's not, not overcome my obstacle. You're 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 not the guy who's who's using the blower outside my window, right? No, uh, no I don't think. <laughs> I think you're a little too far from the <laughs> What way the way, this guy? Not, not all the way from Tennessee. <laughs> no. 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 I did also overcome a technical uh, difficulty. So in my live stream yesterday, I talked about how I was sick and tired of live cameras when it was just all, all they need to do is have one line of code to flip the camera to be where it's actually, you know, you could see what you're seeing. So if you're pointing to your left, right. or you point yeah. to your right, it'll be that way. Well, on the Mac, there's an app for that. And uh, uh, Angela from the group, who's the new, the new trademark lawyer we have in there, she had, yeah. she tossed me an app that I had, I had seen like, you know, forever ago and I totally forgot about it. But so I'm using an app right now. So when I point to my left, this actually is my left. When I point to my right, this actually is my right. So it, it, it'll flip things for you. So what you're seeing on the screen is what everybody else sees as well. So, so but then if there's writing, does it, does it reverse it? Yeah. Like if I, if I hold up anything, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to see, I want to see you hold up the sign that says help and it'll be play. Oh yeah, it's written backwards. Oh, so it's hey, hold on. That's fun, fun, what? Yeah. Fun, fun, fun dip. All right, hold on. <laughs> so there's your problem. So now, now that's what happens. Is then everything is backwards. No, fun. that's not gonna oh. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, there, there, you're, there you're right. Now you got it. That's, that's what happens when you have fun dip. It's like yeah. this. Wait. Yeah. Is, whoa. So that's, what man? Wait. I think I gotta throw up. So far, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So fun dip is not snuff, is it? No. no. Okay, no. thank God. So, hey, look, look, you had you grew up with fun dip. Come on now. This is all I didn't grow up with fun dip. I didn't. My daughter loves that stuff though. Dude, dude. Okay, what how old are you guys? I don't I remember it from when I was a kid. How old are you guys? I don't remember it. But I don't remember. I don't remember fun dip when I was a kid. My daughter. Okay, Jeremy, it. How old are you? Come on, reveal it. I, well, how old do you think I am? He's got to be close to me. So I'll say 75. Don't I look good for 75? I had to insult you like that because you wouldn't reveal it. Social Security <laughs> is paid for all of my subscriptions to broadcast software. So, because so, yeah. I'm 52, and so John, you you had to have seen funny, but you used to come in there like the 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 three pack it had like the three flavors and then like two sticks or whatever, and, that, and that's like the single ones they do now for 
Is it a candy? Is it a candy or what is it? Yeah, it's candy. Oh, okay. It's funny. My daughter, my daughter likes fun dip, and I, I remember looking at it and going, I don't remember that from when I was a kid. I, it, I honestly don't remember it. I, maybe it just Do you remember that area. Do you? How? <laughs> what? No, maybe, maybe it's just one of those things that wasn't in our area. Yeah, it, it yeah. could have been. It could be regional. I don't know. I, I, don't, system, I remember it. I don't remember that. I mean, I, I remember Jenny, Jenny Premail. That was an area. <laughs> no, 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 no. I also remember yeah. Good and Plenty. So. Um, yeah. What was the other you thing? still find those. Unusual yeah. area. Well, just like Moxie is is kind of to this area, Moxie started. Yeah, Moxie's yeah, area. Moxie's is regional kind of thing. I, I, like I yeah, that, that was a big, that was a big, uh, I'd never had it until I moved here. And then I realized that, um, um, you know, working for an Israeli company, they don't like root beer and they really think Moxie is disgusting. Oh. So, so those two things were lots of fun. For us. <laughs> Speaking of root beer, so when I served, I served a mission for my church uh, in Spain, and when we ever talked to now, not all the all the little kids or the youth that we spoke to, you know, because they, yeah. they'd always stop us in the street and stuff and ask us different things about you know America, and they'd want to practice their English and stuff, and uh, we would talk to them about root beer, and they thought it was just, that it tasted like medicine, mm. and oh, I'm yeah. like, it just tasted bad root beer or something because. <laughs> right. Or or luck or luckily because this was back in like eighty eight to ninety, so I was there for two years. I mean, I remember growing up, you know, and we always had medicine taste like crap. You know, nowadays, you know, I'm like, my kids are complaining like, oh, this one's grape or this one's cherry, whatever. I'm like, listen, you need to grow up. What are you complaining about? Good? <laughs> I would have taken root beer. You know what I mean? Flavored I stuff, but I know. I think all ours is turpentine. It seems to be something genetic. It must because, be because. I, Certain certain people just really don't like the taste. It's, yeah, my, my wife cannot. And, and I, I've never met anybody that I that I worked with that came over from, from Israel you know, that liked it. Yeah, couldn't they all couldn't stand it? Like, like, it okay or whatever. But it man, yeah. when we said root beer. Ooh, I think it could be the, the most vile stuff ever. Yeah, it's what they're used to culturally too, because. You know, it's nobody knew that too, right? Nobody starts out liking the taste of Scotch whiskey, you know, in no. your crib. So, probably not. It's an acquired taste. <laughs> <laughs> Most Lutherans are raised on beer, so yeah. So, anyways, I think we got off track. What were we talking about again? Overcoming <laughs> obstacles. Um, so, Jody's obstacle. Actually, I could do this now. Jody, down here. Jody, down that's hard to do, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Easy for me. This is like the four-person Brady Bunch. So That's Jody, was uh, Terry to said, you guys are like the collective yeah. Brady Bunch. Exactly. So Jody was unable to overcome his obstacle of starting his lawnmower, and Troy was was able to overcome his obstacle of mirroring. Yes. And John was able to overcome his obstacle of a five-year health crisis. Yeah, it took a while, let me tell you. But yeah. yeah. Hopefully, Jody's lawnmower will start before five years are up. I <laughs> That would be good. It has to. Oops. What do you have sound effects now? You're really yeah. going to the that's, my, that's my local news. Your local news? What are they warning well, you of? Has the band 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 I mean, can we go outside now? <laughs> can I go outside? Okay. The all no. clear. The all clear. <laughs> right. go outside. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that would be that would be interesting. Okay, you can go outside now. This yeah. Is yeah. Is, this is, this I did go outside crazy. to go shopping today. That was an adventure. Oh, you did go shopping. Did the butcher shop or where'd you go? No, I went to Sam's Club. Oh, shop. That was that was that was quite a quite a trip. Did they keep you six cash register like they do in some places? Costco does pretty, that. Pretty much. I mean, they've yeah. got they've got now every cash register open, so it it it's pretty easy to get in and out. Is that what they put all these cash registers in these stores for? Or is because they knew this was coming? So you you have have cash cash store, there's 20 lanes and there's only two working. I know. There's a couple <laughs> places that just go, oh man, I yeah, I'm beginning to think you might be right on that one. You're planning it. I was wondering what that was about. Yeah. So I don't know. But they, they certainly did prepare ours put in, oh, I want to say like 16 new self checkouts in the front. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. So John, did you go in with the mask? Out yeah. of curiosity. No, I, I went, I popped into Walmart yesterday and I, I, I put on a mask for the first time. I just figured, Hey, what the heck? Not a big deal. Um, and it was interesting because I had been in 
so actually, I, okay, truth be told, I popped into two Walmarts for mm -hmm. really quick. So I, mm -hmm. I went into one that was a smaller one. And it was funny that the people, the, the, the quantity of people wearing masks to no masks in the smaller one. Mm -hmm. So in the smaller one, it was people were like, Corona what? So there were like one or two people in the whole place that, that had it. Uh, in the in the bigger one, it was about a 50 50. Mm. And uh, it was interesting to see all the different uh, creative masks. Oh, then then the funny thing I saw as I was about to head out, I was, you know, going through self checkout, just a few items. Um, there was a pack of five girls uh, near one of the entrances, and they had come in with those, you know, those, they now sell these masks that you can get in a, into a pack, and it's like, oh, the avocado mask, and they put it on, it's for your, you know, it's to do, make you beautify kind of thing. And oh. the the white cream mask, so they all had these different, different ones. <laughs> Like a, a blackish one that's kind of charcoaly or something like that. And well, then the scuba masks. Mask. Well, the whole thing is they they went in there all wearing these masks, and and the girls take another girl was taking a picture of it, and I think they were going to do some stupid thing on like social media, like we wow. went into Walmart with our masks, and I'm like, masks, so. yeah. You know what I think funny about all this? Three months ago, if you'd have walked into these stores looking like we do now, you'd have got shot. Maybe. Well, maybe maybe in Tennessee, <laughs> it aware, but maybe maybe. Tennessee. But I will tell you that the. Oh, yeah. uh, example across the border in Tijuana it before all this stuff you would see people in masks not a lot but maybe I would say maybe five percent of the people would wander around with masks mm -hmm. uh, and and you see in the uh, Asian populations here in Southern California they've been wearing masks for years so yeah, yeah. Well, I mean they do it in China because of pollution not because of viruses but it's it's, a cultural thing. it's, it's also illness it's an illness thing to not spread illness or to not catch it yeah, they're they're not culturally, sure. yeah. Not people that are um, no, they real, they, yeah, they are living on top of each other pretty heavily, aren't yeah. they? Or if, or if they're very immune suppressed. I yeah, because yeah. there are people. Yeah. So it's it's funny you don't see. In fact, within I would say in San Diego, it's interesting. You'll see almost every Asian person of Asian descent is wearing a mask. Right. And you'll see the Mexicans, Mexicans, El Salvadorans, they're wearing masks. Mm -hmm. And here, somebody did a survey recently on Orange Avenue, which is our main street in Coronado. And they uh, they just did the un informal survey, counted 100 people going by, and only 20 out of 100 had masks on. Mm -hmm. So it's it's I think it's just a question of making this sort of a it, – it's a – going to become perhaps a new normal at least for you know quite a few months to come if, yeah. not a, if not a year or so but i saw a lot more people wearing masks and i i usually go to sam's club because i can check out on my phone so i yeah. just i can check out and just walk out the door i don't have to go use the register yeah so i mean it's just it's just one of those things i mean this is a major obstacle that people have to overcome mm -hmm. i mean it's it's oh, yeah. i live stream now it's a yeah <laughs> It's yeah. adversity. It's adversity on a global scale. Mm -hmm. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. So, hey, so what's our time frame here? So we've got. We're almost up on we're, an hour. We're, we're coming up on yeah, the hour. We're coming up on the hour. Did, did the I hour. get here late? What's that? What? Did I get here late? <laughs> you were right. The party started at little late to the party, but that's party all right. 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. We'll, we'll still yeah. hang out a little bit longer. Are you still, you're still, you're Eastern in Tennessee, right? Or are you Central? I no, in uh, my part of Tennessee, we uh, we stay Eastern. You stay Eastern. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's about, about Nashville, about right in the middle of the state is where it oh, switches okay. over. Uh, this is a good part of Tennessee. Tennessee gets me confused almost as much as Arizona, so. Well, I'm, I'm in the mountains. I'm far east Tennessee. I'm oh, okay. in the North Carolina border. You're in the right. Great Smokies. You, you, yep, you yeah. got it. Yeah. yeah, I've driven through there when I was trying to take my sister's car from San Antonio to Buffalo. You're close to Sevierville, right? To what? Isn't it Sevierville? Sevier? So, Sevierville? Sevierville. Sevierville. Yeah. It's very severe. Yeah, that's actually my address is actually a yeah. Sevierville address. Oh. But I'm only like 10 minutes from Pigeon Forge or 20 minutes from Gatlinburg. Right. That's where I want to yeah. go camping. It, it's all right here together. Anyway, yeah. Oh, you get down here camping, you better let me know. I I will. I drive a 32 foot bus. You got a long driveway? You got a long driveway. Well, part of it is. <laughs> and you don't know that it'll make the first turn, definitely not the second. <laughs> you go everybody go up the, the side of the mountain here. One of, one of my friends decided to go. He bought an RV about the same time as I did, and he didn't he didn't keep it. His was two two or three feet longer than mine, 
and he went to stay with one of our friends in the Chicago area. And oh he backs into the driveway and he's like over the sidewalk, almost into the street. And I'm like, dude, you should have got like a foot shorter or something, or For Steve sure. needs to get a longer driveway. <laughs> so that's my running joke with everybody. You know, they say, Oh, you should come down, you know, like my friend Steve Rosenbaum says the other day, Oh, you should come down to Texas sometime. I said, Well, you got a 32 foot driveway? It's my first question. <laughs> well, we, <laughs> Maybe I'll we, show up. We just we just have on street parking. Because I hate then, flying that right now. I used to fly can, so much. Too. That's another thing, Dr. V. Flying. Yeah. It's like I used to fly all the time. I was constantly hopping on a plane, flying yeah. all over the place. Now it's like the last thing I want to do is get on a plane. It's it's so weird. I don't mind, but I just I was, I was born to fly. fly. I've been on jets since I was five years old, and that was yeah. Just, yeah. Don't get me wrong, I like it, but yeah. it's just the hassles of it are so big right now. Nobody wants to go through the security and then. Yeah, but see, we've got we've got the global entry thing, and so we just pop yeah. on through. Most of the time, it takes me three to six minutes to go through security, so I don't right. care. So that's not so bad. No, no, and probably now we take thirty seconds. So <laughs> I, like, I like driving. I'm having so much fun driving. Yeah. These days. Me, I just yeah. stay home. Mm -hmm. You just stay home. I've been staying home a lot more than I want to. Well, I want yeah. to go on my walks, I'm driving right now, but you know. the current mask that I have just is it's kind of itchy and it really doesn't allow me to breathe very well. So I'm going to I'm switching mm -hmm. to bandanas just because I was able to breathe a little bit better. So mine was kind of smelly yesterday out of the pack. Oh, <laughs> I know somebody probably like that could, have been, that could have been my breath, but I know it wasn't that. Right. <laughs> Coming back at your nose. Yeah. <laughs> So is there anything we didn't talk about with obstacles? And I, I think we will. I, I think we, we started out mainly because I wanted to interview you and some of the obstacles and things that you had. Yeah. because We weren't sure we were going to get anybody on. So. No, no. And look what happened. <laughs> <laughs> we got like everybody on. So It's a bit of serendipity, but except no, my, it's our own fun dip. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. My, uh, my last point really on, on with, uh, you know, obstacles is yeah. – the unfortunate, and the way I say unfortunate is because I don't, I don't like it, but it's the truth. There, with an obstacle that you have, there's really no way um, around it, underneath it, no. over it. Is you just have to go through it. Yeah. And from a from a religious aspect, th the way I kind of look at it is both a both a religious aspect, but also a philosophy a philosophy that I have, or the way I think about it is you know, help me learn what I'm supposed to as I go through this, yeah. so that it makes me stronger. Because right. I remember, you know, I think being when I was younger, I, I'd always think like, well, how can I kind of circumvent this? And there are cases where you can, I, I wouldn't maybe, maybe call it circum, uh, you can't circumvent it, but you actually find a better way to go through it. Right. Or maybe you're more effective or you, um, you can learn to appreciate going through it or whatever. But if it's something where you're wanting to become something else or something better, yeah, you just you have to go through it. And as much as I don't like it, I have to keep reminding myself when I come up to a situation like that. Right. You reminded me yeah. of, a, of a book that I finished on Audible as a, on my walks, which is Ryan Holiday's The Obstacle is the Way. Anybody read that one or listened to it? No, I, I highly recommend it. Ryan Holiday is he's taken. He's just brilliant. His first book, I think he wrote when he was 22 or so. Mm -hmm. um, and he studied all the major philosophers, and he has a great way of putting stoicism into something very practical, which is you go through, as you say, you're going through the obstacle, yeah. and it creates a greater strength in you, resilience, and everything yeah. else. And that's just, I think, you know, part of that comes from us being able to do these lives as we develop our sense of community. Oh, for sure. I think, too, as entrepreneurs, we become really <laughs> crazy strong human beings, you know, because yeah. we, we probably encounter way more obstacles than most people do. And it just makes us bulletproof. And um, like you, Troy, I'm, I'm one of those people too, that just kind of looks at things and you look, you kind of look for the lesson. And at the same time, you have to kind of think that at the end of this thing, there's going to be a big present at the end of the obstacle that you've gone through. Like there's I, something I, I, yeah. that I typically. I do most. believe, I believe in this, this sort of world obstacle worldwide obstacle that you will not find a silver lining you're going to find your platinum lining oh yeah so and i also think sometimes to to add a little bit of clarification because i agree with you john that you, you know 
there is a lining to it. And, and then even to go further, say a platinum lining, yeah. well, you may not, you, once you get to the other side and you know, you're at the other side, you, you your realization of what that is may not necessarily be right then though, as well. Right. Maybe later on when you realize, ah, because you may be in another situation you realize you're actually tapping in from that previously and it's helping you through this, this new situation. And that's when you come right. to the realization of, of what you got from that before. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. Yeah, I've, awesome. I've always had the philosophy: everything happens for a reason. Now, what's the reason? Me too. You know, sometimes that reason you you realize it right away, and it's like Troy says: sometimes you don't realize that reason until months or years down the road when you're going through something else. Mm, very true. Hey, you know, we were joking one day. Uh, my friend Ken Stone and I were talking about you know everything that we've gone through. You can draw a line through it and just kind of see this commonality and the reason that you went through this the time you did it's so true of that saying that you know everything happens for a reason but um, i think life life in and of itself is a giant learning curve so. it is but you can see how things line up like there's purpose to a lot of things mm -hmm. that when you really start to look you go i was meant to go that through this for this reason and and we wouldn't be the same person that we are right now unless we had gone through those obstacles that's true. Yeah. We, we are the lump sum of our experience. Oh, mm -hmm. Very, very true. Very true indeed. Hey, speaking of obstacles, mm -hmm. aren't, you, aren't you the uh, dinner creator? Yeah, yeah. But I just, I, I'm always very acutely aware of 6 p.m. being the time that you it, have it, your, that's your really cool. so, very cool. Couple <laughs> things that John our, the feedback on. Couple things have changed at our house, though, in the oh. last week. Oh. oh. My uh, my wife is still do, still seeing a couple of clients because she's got uh, some that are in very delicate scenarios yeah. that they they said you know we really we appreciate you wanting to stay home and away from us but we also know that we aren't going to be able to live through this without you <laughs> so uh -oh. so she she is still seeing like a limited couple, uh, okay. probably like one client a day she's she's seeing that's really got some kind of uh, chronic issue that. You know, really needs really needs help, and a lot of our PT um, offices, like locally, other other offices, not I mean, not like we have other offices, but have remained open. Um, wow. And um, you know, she's got a couple of people that need regular treatment, so she's she had to start picking that up. But she took she took two weeks off just to kind of get the lay of land and see what was happening, and you know, what I was hoping to do. And I get just, supplies to be able to do that to stay open. Yeah, I was just trying to be cognizant of your mm -hmm. of your previous schedule. <laughs> no, no. Tonight, I'm in pretty good shape. You're a free man. I get dinner made. Oh, really? Yeah, I picked up a rotisserie chicken today. Oh, there you go. <laughs> easy yeah. meal. Makes life easy. Every once in a while. <laughs> exactly. Right. Actually, speaking of of food, I actually I'm probably gonna pop off and uh, go see if the the kiddos because my wife said my wife said uh, her salon there are there are women that uh, still uh, can't live without without her. <laughs> I know. So, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go pop off and get the kids uh, some food and uh, some actually fun, some fun dips some some, some fun dips. Dips. yeah, yeah we're gonna and, and, some, yeah. and took some hot dogs outside. In the fire pit kind of thing. So Good night for that. Yeah. And so here, I would do that here if I could. <laughs> so, yeah. We so, where we did, we got a pretty a pretty decent size uh piece of land. And so we're able to do the fire pit kind of stuff. And that's cool. Nice. It's, uh, yeah, no no better reason than to do it now. I mean, heck, you know, like I've I've always said I was gonna, you know, get around to doing it. And so when this time came up, I'm like, let's do let's start doing this. And so I you know, we started the whole setup for it and everything. So, yeah, sure. yeah. And now I just mentioned my wife. She just came home. There you go. Right, right through the store in like two seconds. I, I felt a ripple in the forest. Yes. A yes. tremor. Yes. tremor in the forest. A, ball, a tremor in the forest. Exactly. Come through right, guys. Guys. Have a good one. We'll talk soon. Yeah. No, good. Thanks, Thanks for stopping by. Absolutely. Good to, you. good to see you, Troy. Appreciate hey, it. Buddy, you have a good one too, man. All right. Sounds good. So on that note, Seeing that my lovely wife is home, I guess it's time to wrap it up. I think it's time to wrap it up before. Yeah, before Terry, I, you do. It's a popular activity tonight. It's popular. popular. So, so, so is five o'clock the normal time now each day, or? 
we're I doing we're doing the two yeah we're trying to do the two o'clock thing uh well two pacific five five yeah five eastern two pacific figuring figuring that a lot of people have finished their work day around then but seems for me i've got a lot more work to do still so yeah seems to be working well we get a lot of activity at this time and then the week the weekend is a whole different story so right we haven't quite figured, figured that, that one out yeah so five, five seems to be a really good time a lot yeah. of people stop by five we're alive at five well, i'll try to keep an eye out for that then if it's a little bit of the schedule now better than what it used to be yeah that's, that's no, cool. we, just, we were pretty random because we we're trying to experiment and figure out when people would pop on and it was there was no rhyme or reason and then we just started saying, let's try this hi <laughs> there Hello. she is hey she's back oh, you got supper ready hey. Hey. Hi. This is like everybody everywhere. So. Oh, yes. Okay. On, on what? Well, eight Facebook channels? Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Welcome home. All right. Now yeah. I'm going to step out of the way. <laughs> no, we're fine. We're, we're ending now because yeah, we, we're, 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 we want to incur your wrath. So he yeah. can, he can <laughs> dinner, dinner together. Yes, <laughs> you can have dinner together. I come home, and that's what – that's uh. That's the deal. That's the deal. We <laughs> we give you permission to eat. I told you she's gonna come through that door expecting dinner and you ain't got it ready. Yeah, that's oh, weird. No, it. it's, it's a role it's right. reversal. I was trying to cut him off. Dinner's <laughs> already dinner's already. I'm good. Pretty good. Okay, we well, ain't gonna let your secret out. Oh, yeah, exactly. So hey, good seeing you guys. Good to see you all people. Bye. Yeah, yeah. Later, guys. And, uh, see ya. So five o'clock is our regular. Five. Five live at five. Let's see if we can get like five three. people at five. That would be more interesting. There you Maybe go. Thanks. So that'd be good. All right. I was, I was told yep. six was the max when I came into the studio. So yeah. So we wait. Send me different messages. See ya. Bye. 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 All right. Hang on. Don't run away yet. Okay. Well, Joe.